Doctors and nutritionists are finding food and supplements that fight inflammation are everywhere. They found that there's more than one way to fight inflammation. All the solutions may not be in your medicine cabinet, but many of the solutions might be right in your refrigerator. And that's what we're going to talk about today on Kevin's Healthy Living. Shut Shut up up and sit sit down. down. Hey everyone, so when inflammation lingers on um, and settles in for days or weeks or something like that, even if you haven't been attacked by anything, uh, it usually becomes, a, it's, it, that's going to be very problematic and it's going to continue to cause problems even bigger than that. And the inflammation's, uh, inflammation is so bad uh, to our system that many of the major diseases have been associated like cancer, heart disease, diabetes, arthritis, depression. Uh, Alzheimer's, they've all been linked to chronic uh, chronic inflammation. So we're going to talk about that today. So let's start off with the foods that fight and combat inflammation. All right. So that's actually a pretty good list there. If you look at it, tomatoes, olive oil, green leafy vegetables, kale, collards, uh, nuts, almonds, walnuts, fish, fruits, those kind of things. So um, those are going to be the food, foods on the list that are going to uh, fight inflammation. And you, as you know, if you listen to my stuff, uh, know what we're about here. We try to go with the um, uh, least evasive, most natural way to uh, uh, to combat whatever we're discussing and then move on into uh, other ways and supplements and stuff like that. So let's start with the foods that get your inflammation under control. You know, choosing the right foods may not ward off everything. Uh, it may be only able to reduce your risk of illness a little bit, but it may help you also live a long, healthy life. The, on the other side of that, though, if you constantly pick the wrong foods, you really could accelerate the inflammatory process, cause yourself bigger, longer problems, and your quality of life certainly will go down. So uh, we want to make sure that we try and stick with those foods that are going to uh, uh, combat inflammation like we have on that list there. So... Um, Next up on the uh, is what you know what kind of foods cause that inflammation. Now, that list is a little shorter, but it's a little broader in in scope. But it's it's a little shorter. We got refined carbohydrates, fried foods, sodas and other sugared beverages, red meat. Now, keto folks, settle down. Red meat, you know, I like red meat. I have red meat. I can't have a lot of it because I, I get a little bit of gout in one of my feet, in my toe, and if I have too much red meat, that flares it up. It's a trigger. But red meat's not bad, uh, but it can cause inflammation in some folks, so it did make the list. Processed meats like hot dogs and sausages, margarine, shortening, and lard, those kind of things. You know, it's not surprising that the foods that are on that list is uh, uh, are generally considered to be bad for our health, you know, including the sodas, refined carbs, the uh, red meat, processed meats, you know, those kind of things. So some of the foods that have been associated with the risk of chronic disease, such as type 2 diabetes and heart disease, are associated with all this excess inflammation, which in turn is triggered by some of these things. Um, it's, not, and it's, it's not surprising that, uh, uh, that, it's in, that uh, inflammation is an important underlying uh, uh, problem in the development of all of these diseases. So... Anyway, so what we want to talk about now is we want to get on to, you know, how do you, eating anti-inflammatory eating or how do you eat uh, anti-inflammatory style or whatever you want to call it. Um, you know, there, the uh, uh, the the food and, and beverages that we eat um, have been found to reduce, some of them have been found to reduce the risk of inflammation, but others uh haven't and and with that with an increased inflammation we have chronic diseases uh uh and stuff we have stuff though that fights those things some of these foods and fruits and stuff like that particularly the fruits like blueberries apples leafy greens they're all high in natural antioxidants polyphenols uh they're uh which is a protective compound that's found in plants Um, They've also shown that nuts reduce these markers of inflammation and lower the risk of cardiovascular disease, diabetes, like coffee, which contains those same polyphenols and other anti-inflammatory compounds, which protect against inflammation as well. So how do we eat anti-inflammatory? Or what do do I mean by that? It's, It's to reduce the inflammation by changing your diet, your overall health, how you eat, eating foods that are that I've been listing here that 
that fight inflammation and all that and staying away from those that don't. So consider if you if you're looking for if you don't want to put together your own diet. Let's say you want to find somebody who's put something together already that's going to be closely to an anti-inflammatory eating. Look at the Mediterranean diet. It's high in fruits, vegetables, nuts, whole grains, fish, healthy oils. I have a, a book for uh, a Mediterranean diet. If you don't have one, send me an email, one of these uh, forms that you see throughout here. Just put a comment in there. Can you send me the Mediterranean stuff? And I'll, I'll uh, uh, get that on off to you. That diet to go by, it's super healthy for you. Um, it's really, it's, it's, and it's super easy to follow. Um, you don't have to do, there's no special things you got to buy other than good foods. So, uh, uh, you know, consider that one. So now once we get past the foods, there are, there are times when our bodies are, uh, when inflammation is taking place because of trauma, illness, stress, something like that, something that gets way ahead where food is not going to be able to help us out. And we're not necessarily help us out, but it's you're going to need a little boost. Food always helps. Um, and then that comes in the form of supplements. And there's there's basically six of them that really help to fight inflammation. Uh, alpha lipoic acid. I'm not sure if I'm pronouncing that correctly. Uh, curcumin, fish oil, ginger, resveratrol, and uh, spirulina. So you know our bodies suffer from inflammation all the time, and we want to uh, we want to buy fight it with the foods that we eat um, and stay away from those unhealthy foods and the habits and stuff uh, that uh, and lifestyle choices that affect the uh, uh, inf uh, inflammation within our body. The anti-inflammatory foods, exercise, good sleep, stress management, all of those things can help. Um, so let's look at these six supplements. So we got the alpha lipoic acid. That's the first one on the list. That one's, uh, it's a fatty acid that's made by our bodies. It plays a key role in metabolism and energy production. Um, it also has a function as an anti in, in, uh, antioxidant. It protects your cells from damage. Uh, it helps restore the levels of antioxidants like vitamin C and E also. Uh, alpha lipoic acid, it reduces the level of uh, uh, blood levels in in, in uh several of the uh, inflammatory markers. Uh, it also, uh, it's found to reduce markers in uh, heart disease patients also. So uh, it's, it's, um, uh, it's a, uh, you know, real good uh, supplement to, um, you know, consider. Now I, now I kind of skipped a couple of the uh, uh, slides here just for, to, you know, for brevity purposes. This one's important though. This has the recommended dosages on it. Uh, you can, uh, uh, you know, pause this if you need to and take a look at those, uh, the potential side effects. I'm going to go through that on all six of these. Uh, this one here, there's none if you take the recommended dosages. So what's the bottom line here on alpha lipoic acid? Well, it's, it's an antioxidant that reduces inflammation and it improves the symptoms of certain diseases. So next on the list is curcumin. So curcumin, you know, it's, it's a spice that falls in the, um, in the, Turmeric uh, uh, group, it's part of that. It has several health benefits. It fights inflammation for diabetes, heart disease, inf uh, inflammatory bowel disease, or IBS and cancer. Um, it also, it looks like it has a real beneficial uh, in, uh, inflammation reducing effect on uh, symptoms of uh, osteoarthritis and rheumatoid arthritis also. So curcumin is, is, uh, is uh, a very good uh a supplement to add to your uh, uh, daily routine and all that if you suffer from some of these things. it's Our body has a hard time absorbing it, uh, so when you do it, you need to take something to boost the absorption, something like uh, uh, piperin, which is uh, found in black pepper. Again, I might be just tearing up that word, but it's P-I-P-E-R-I-N-E, and it's found in black pepper. It'll increase the absorption up to 2,000%. Um, so that's definitely something to consider if you're going down the curcumin path. So here's again the recommended dosages, 10 to 500 milligrams, no uh, notable side effects or anything like that. So what's the takeaway here? Uh, you know, curcumin's a, a anti-inflammatory again like the others, a supplement that reduces inflammation, a wide range of diseases, uh, those kind of things. So that basically is a takeaway. So what's next on the list? Fish oil. Okay, so fish oil, it has those, uh, the omega-3 fatty acids you probably hear a lot about. It's vital for good health. Uh, it uh, decreases inflammation with, associated with, di again, with diabetes, heart disease, cancer, um, and a lot of other conditions. 
So definitely something to consider in your uh, in your um, uh, daily supplement routine. I, I take fish oil every day. Now it's it, finding supplements, and I put some uh, links for helping uh, for finding some of the good supplements down below and some of the things to look for. When it comes to fish oil, you can get fish oil in a number of different ways. You can get it in pill and liquid and all that other stuff. Uh, it's the omega-3 fatty acids that you're actually looking for. So if you're able to take a supplement that doesn't give you those fish burps, and I'm putting my fingers up with the air quotes, fish burps, if anybody's taken uh, fish oil knows what I'm talking about. Um, there's a lot of supplements out there. Look for them on there that speak specifically to that to uh, keep you from uh, getting those kind of things. Uh, it is known to look at, uh, it drops the uh, levels of EPA and DHA. Uh, so this is a really a, a, a good supplement, again, that to have. You should, you should be having some of this in your uh, uh, daily supplements every day, one to one and a half grams of omega-3s uh, uh, um, per day. So uh, it, it, there, it, it may be a blood thinner if it's taken in higher doses, which means that you really should talk to your doctor if you do decide to use uh, uh, fish oil in higher doses. So what's the takeaway here? Again, fish oil supplements contain the omega-3 fatty acids that improve the inflammation in a number of those diseases, diabetes, heart disease, all those ones I listed. Again, if you're taking blood thinners or aspirin or something like that, don't take this unless your doctor says it's okay. All right. So, uh, so let's take a look at ginger. Now, um, ginger is uh, uh, a fantastic supplement. It's it's a it's actually a you know a root. It's ground into uh, a powder. It's usually put in food, sweet or savory dishes. Uh, it's commonly ground uh, ground up. It's uh, uh, traditionally used for indigestion, nausea, morning sickness sometimes. Uh, so what makes it so special? Now, now ginger has two things in it: the gingerol and the uh, zingingerone. <laughs> it may re they, both of those may reduce inflammation. Um, they uh, they're linked to uh, to uh, reducing the inflammation for colitis, uh, kidney damage, diabetes, breast cancer. You know, diabetes appears in a lot of these. So any uh, the folks that are uh, type two or any of that, take a look at some of these supplements and talk to your doctor about maybe incorporating them in if you haven't already. See what you can do about uh, getting that under control. So anyway, so ginger. So now the recommended dosage is you know one gram to two grams daily is considered safe. Anything more than that might be a blood thinner. Again, make sure you talk to your doctor. Um, so what's the takeaway? You know, it's just a great, it's a great supplement. It tastes good. Uh, it reduces inflammation. It reduces muscle pain and soreness after exercise, which is really important to those of us. You know, we hit the gym, we're sore when we're done. End of the day, you're sore, whatever. Ginger's a good supplement to have to decrease that muscle pain and soreness. So um, again, you know, the takeaway, it's shown to reduce inflammation as well as muscle pain, soreness after exercise. So next on the list is res resveratrol. Now resveratrol is, um, uh, it's found in uh, grapes for one. Uh, it's, a, it's a great anti antioxidant. It's found in blueberries and other fruits with purple skins. It's also found in red wine and peanuts of all things. So, um, you know, resveratrol is, uh, uh, supplements lower inflammatory market markers triglycerides blood sugar um, in uh, people with obesity in another study people with obesity were able to lower inflammatory markers such as triglycerides and uh, blood sugar however the trial showed that the improvement in the inflammatory markets among overweight people uh, uh, they were with the ones that were taken was taken resveratrol were higher than the people that the control group so uh again it's uh contained in red wine uh you know less than 13 milligrams in red wine uh the equivalent of uh to get the equivalent of uh of resveratrol that you need you'd have to drink 11 liters of three gallons of wine every day and so i, I don't i don't necessarily recommend that uh it, uh, it is in red wine. It does have tons of health benefits. The amount of red wine is not as, uh, is, as much as people um, uh, thought, you know, think that it should be. As I said, it's, you know, basically there's only 13 milligrams in 34 ounces. So, um, and the uh, uh, daily 
uh, recommend daily is 150 uh, or more per day. Uh, benefits come after 150 milligrams or more per day. And to get the equivalent of resveratrol, as I said, 11 liters of three gallons. So, um, you know, the the recommended dosage here, you know, we're talking 150 to 500 milligrams a day. Uh, there's uh, no side effects, uh, some digestive issues possibly in stuff, uh, you know, uh, in like five grams a day or more. Uh, it does reduce many of the uh, inflammatory markers and it does provide a ton of health benefits. So what's next on the list? It's spirulina. Now this is a blue-green algae. It's uh, found in a ton of those green drinks that everybody's drinking. Uh, I like the Organifi one. That one's uh, got a great uh, 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 compound in it that uh, it's got a lot of really good stuff in it. But any of the ones, you can actually get just straight spirulina and you mix it with water or whatever you want and uh, it reduces the inflammation. Uh, uh, you know how I am on the uh, subject of aging and all of that. Uh, some of these studies show that it, uh, the spirulina can strengthen the immune system, and that's that's big for people that uh, you know as our aging process goes. Uh, it improves uh, the markers for anemia, uh, immune infection. Uh, one study uh, showed that people with diabetes were given eight grams of spirulina per day for 12 weeks, and the eleven uh, and the levels of inflammation markers of MDA decreased. So. What's the recommended dosage? One to eight grams a day based on some of the current studies. Aside from allergies, there's no potential side effects. Uh, you know, and there's no, uh, uh, at the at least at the recommended dosage. So takeaway, spirulina provides antioxidant production. Uh, it reduces inflammation and it may improve, uh, improve symptoms of certain diseases. Uh, so definitely include that as a supplement in your daily, in your daily plan. So as I said, to be smart with your supplements, you know, um, if you want to try any of these supplements, it's important to remember, buy from a reputable manufacturer, follow the dosage instructions, and then check with your doctor to see if you have any medical conditions or the, if you take any medication. You know, I've said before, and I always try, uh, and you should too, to get uh, anti-inflammatory stuff through nutrients through whole foods. Now, um, uh, you know, if you have a serious inflammation issues, acute or chronic, uh, you know, a good clean supplement routine can help bring things back in line and help your overall health. You know, as always, check with your doctor before changing any diet or supplement pen. Your your healthcare providers, they may have a plan in place that you, uh, and you don't want to ruin any progress that you've already made. You don't want any uh, thing uh, uh, adverse reacting to something that they're giving you. So remember, any questions or concerns, please make a comment below. I try to respond within a day. Sometimes the topic or question requires me to do a little more research, so it takes a little more time. You know, but I promise I'll, I'll always, uh, 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 I always will do the take the time to research it. But I and I won't guess, I won't assume, and I'll let you know where I stand on on an issue. I don't hold that stuff back. So, if there's uh, uh, anything else that uh, any other questions or concerns or anything that you'd like to. Uh, uh, bring up or anything else or uh, any topics that you'd like me to bring up, just put in one of the comment things down below. Remember, be brave, be courageous, and be yourself. Have a great day.